Hi all, the purpose of this video is to go over Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law. So our learning goals and objectives is to be able to apply Lenz's Law to determine the induced current. And then the second one is to be able to connect Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law. So, let's say that we have a loop of wire that has a resistance big R has a radius little a and uh, yeah so as of right now that's it for the wire just resistance R radius a now we will say that there is a magnetic field that is being threaded through this loop. So if we remember how to determine magnetic flux, it's B dot A. So the first thing we can do here is uh, we can determine um, the magnetic flux through here. So it's going to be equal to, so the area vector is going to be parallel to the magnetic field, so the area vector of a loop is going to be pointing right out at you, uh, so this is just going to be B times A, or B times pi little a squared, because this is the area of a circle. So now, what we need to do is, uh, in this problem, I'm going to give a simple example of a time-dependent magnetic field B so that we can uh, you know, actually apply Lenz's law. So what this will end up being is it's going to be magnetic field that's a function of time times pi A squared. And then what we can do is we can say that our B of T is equal to B0 times time. So it's just some magnetic field strength times time, so as time gets moves further along, the magnetic field increases. So in uh, this case, let's say we do phi of m at t1, and this would be b0 t1 pi a squared. Now, uh, what's going to end up happening is this is the flux at some point, and as we increase the B field through here, so uh, for T1, that should be a later time T2, for T2 greater than T1, our phi of m t2 is going to be greater than phi of m t1. So all this is saying is that if we look at the flux at 5 seconds and the flux at 10 seconds, the flux at 10 seconds is going to be larger. And it's going to be twice as larger because we're just assuming that this is going to be linear. So, um, what we would do is, so this is at T1, and we can redraw this for T2. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to be more magnetic field in here. So what's going to happen is we are going to get an induced current that's going to be in the direction such that to oppose this field. So if you think for a second on what direction it has to be so that the induced magnetic field opposes this change in flux, um, that would be nice. Uh, just sort of make a prediction. Do you think the current's going to flow clockwise or counterclockwise? All right, great. So the current is going to flow clockwise because it's going to have 
a B induced that's going to be into the page that's going to try and cancel this out. So this is Lenz's law. So uh, Lenz's law is that the induced current is going to be in the direction such that it tries to uh, hopelessly cancel out the change in magnetic uh, flux. So that that's Lenz's law. Now, so this is I induced. We're physicists. We would like to know what is this I induced? Can we actually calculate it? So. Uh, if we remember Ohm's law, the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance. In this case, we have an induced current and a resistance. Now, we want to find out what the induced current is. We're given the resistance, and how would we actually solve for V? So this is where uh, we actually use Faraday's law. So Faraday's law is that the C to VMF or voltage, that's all it is, is a voltage, is equal to the negative of the derivative of the magnetic flux over with respect to time. So, uh, for this situation, I would say um, ignore the negative sign. So, more or less, this will help us calculate the magnitude, and by Lenz's law, we'll get the direction. So, you don't need to worry about, oh, putting a negative sign on the direction on the current from Lenz's law, because that'll be correct. It'll be in the direction that it should be. So, we're going to use Faraday's law to actually figure out what the voltage is for Ohm's law and we'll be actually able to figure out the current. So in the previous example, you'll remember that uh, our voltage is just going to be equal to, so we're going to take the magnitude of d dt of phi m and then that's going to be equal to d dt of b0 t pi a squared and then so all that's going to be happening is this is a linear function so we're just going to end up with b0 pi a squared now if we use Ohm's law so we have V equals I R and we solve for the current so it's V over R then we can put in b0 pi a squared which we determined from up here and then that's over the resistance R of the wire. And then this is the magnitude of induced current. So we know the magnitude of the induced current now. And uh, this is going to be what the induced current would be for Lenz's law. And you know, we could also use Ampere's law to actually figure out the strength of the induced magnetic field would be, because it's just going to be a function of the radial distance and the uh, current I. All right, so thank you very much.